Vaughn is your host here, Vaughn. Play a channel is not only good for your understanding about Vietnamese culture, but it also provides you knowledge and trends in automotive industry to help enhance your business capability and opportunity. Auto industry continues to involve new car models, contain new technology and new materials, especially the increasing complexity of ADAS system to electric and hybrid vehicles. Technology innovations keep us pursuing on understanding of new repair techniques, skills, procedures, tools, and equipment. As the workshop owners, you want to know the beneficial of the new innovation and trainer. As the driver, you may want to know more options on your car repair and maintenance to ensure your safety. From now on, our channel will bring a series of collision repair workshop and related demonstration. And today, we're gonna look into a very new and hot topic called Advanced Driver as System System ADAS Calibration. Let's start knowing it from the need of the ADAS Calibration and its logic. Let's welcome our industry experts, Michelle Malik from Body Shop News Publisher and Robert Snook from MG Cannon to share with us today. Welcome to Auto Mechanica Shanghai. My name is Michelle Malik, and with me is my colleague Robert Snook. Hello, Robert. Good afternoon, um, Michelle. Good afternoon to you. So we are here to um, do a small webinar for you to explain to you the latest in collision repair technology. And we're going to start with part one, and we're going to talk about ADAS. What is ADAS and how does it work? Robert, please explain to us. Okay, Michelle, well, we're going to use a, a single graphic for this that explains to us very clearly how ADAS works. So this example is an Audi Q4 e-tron. And you can see that on this vehicle, it has 360 degree network protection. These systems, cameras, sensors do not operate in isolation. They are all connected up and the car is connected to the outside world. So just starting in the top right hand corner there, you can see we have a rear camera. We will have six rear ultrasonic sensors with a four and a half meter side range, rear radar modules with a two and a half meter range, cameras in the front doors, the options not on this particular vehicle, but options for a front solid state LIDAR module that will have a range of about 150 meters. There are also options for front radar side modules. It does have a front radar module with a range of 150 to 200 meters, and then six front ultrasonic sensors a front door camera on the other side, a front bumper camera in the grille, and then lastly, the windscreen camera with a range of between 250 to 300 meters of full effectiveness. And that all comes together through the top of the screen there, the V2X, the vehicle, vehicle to everything communication model, which allows that car to communicate with the outside world. So as you can see, all round protection, fully connected, and, and whatever area that car is going to suffer damage in, it will affect the ADAS system, Michelle. Thank you, Robert. That was a good explanation. Now, um, if I can ask you a few questions, how common are these ADAS systems? How many vehicles on the road have ADAS fitted now? Okay, well, the very first front-facing ADAS systems appeared on the road about 20 years ago. And since then, some countries have introduced legal requirements for it. So it's now becoming much more common in those countries. Taking the UK as an example, we have about 6 million vehicles equipped with ADAS on the roads out of a car park of 38 million vehicles. So we have about a 15% ADAS equipped car park today. However, if you're a body shop primarily doing one to five year old cars, as we do in our business, then what you'll find is that most of the cars you're already repairing will have ADAS fitted to them. And about 25 to 40% of your work mix will require some form of ADAS fitted and recalibration required before you can safely return those cars to the customers. So um, even if more vehicles will have ADAS in the future, what choices will repairers have with ADAS? Do they have any choice but to invest in ADAS? But it re there are really three basic choices, Michelle. The first one is to invest in multi-brand ADAS capability so that you can do everything in house. The second choice would be to specialize in doing some brands in-house, but then subcontract everything else. And the third option would be to, to not invest and subcontract all of your ADAS repairs. 
there's no right choice for everyone, but everyone has to make the right choice for them and build a business model around that choice. The mistake is to just try and muddle through. So how important is it to identify ADAS on a vehicle coming in for repair? It's absolutely critical, Michelle. It's more important than fitting the panel correctly or getting an accurate color match um, because it directly affects the safety of the customer and other road users once you return that car. It helps you maximize your integrity, your brand positioning, and reduces the risk and liability to your business. So when, when should it be done and, and who should do it and, and how do we do that? Well, it should be done right up front and it should be done by the estimator as, so that you can understand what is required and which of the technicians are competent to be able to repair and recalibrate that vehicle. The estimator should record that research that he does to compile that estimate and make sure that it's clearly documented for any audit that's required later on. Uh, there are no specific ADAS repair standards for, or insurance policy wordings. So what will happen if a body shop doesn't have the capability to repair and recalibrate ADAS properly? Well, a lack of awareness, training, or even capability is not an excuse and will not absolve the repairer or the employees involved in that repair from their responsibility or their future liability from returning an uncalibrated or an accurately calibrated vehicle. If any body shop or employee does not feel they have the skills, the equipment, the information, the knowledge to repair an ADAS equipped vehicle safely and correctly to manufacturers, methods and standards, they should refuse the repair or subcontract to someone who does have those capabilities. Um, it's just never worth the risk of carrying out a safe uh, repair um, on equipment and using staff that aren't able to do so. So before the vehicle is returned to the customer, make sure it's done correctly. Don't take any risks. Thank you. Now, um, I'm going to have to ask, how does ADAS affect the repair operations? Um, I think we've got a couple of slides to have a look at, if you don't mind. Okay. So the first slide we're showing here, Michelle, is just two aftermarket examples of typical equipment where you can access uh, the vehicle data and also some examples of some repair methods. So on the left-hand side there, you have two tablets, handheld systems that the technicians would use to do their pre and post diagnostic check that would connect with the vehicle. On the right hand side there, you can see some methods. These can either be electronic or in printed format. And it really takes the, the technician through a step-by-step -step manufacturer approved process to repair and recalibrate that vehicle. Moving on to the second slide, Michelle, what we have here is the three types of ADAS uh, calibration system that we have. So top left with the white vehicle, you have an example of a static calibration system. So as you can see, this takes a much bigger, wider uh, work bay than a normal work bay would be. So you have to factor that into your plan. At the bottom there, you have an example of dynamic calibration. So this is where the sensors and cameras in the vehicle, as you can see, are picking up everything from the front number plate to the vanishing point down the road lane markings, road signs and hazards all included in that. And then top right, you have an example of an adaptive system sensor, which is positioned behind the rear bumper of a car. So again, without access to the vehicle and to the manufacturer repair methods, you don't know exactly what that sensor is and it can vary from model to model and factory to factory on the same model of car. And that's it, that explains exactly how ADAS works in operation, Michelle. I wish you enjoyed the topic today. There are more to talk about in the next episode, like what are the conditions and requirements to apply ADAS system in your workshops, how to gain better reputation and return to your business by the right adaption of ADAS system in your repair tasks. As a driver, it's very important to know how to have a happy and safe driving experience. And I hope you drive safe and happy on the road. Simply let us know what topics you are interested in by comment down below and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell so you won't miss your next favorite episode. Now, let's play it, watch it and feel it together. I'll see you next time. Bye!